Well, hey there, YouTube. Uh, Jens Davidson here. We're back after I finished eating a very, very delicious steak in the mushrooms. Um, the butter really set it apart. I think that might actually have been the best steak that I've cooked. Um, I'm not a chef, like I mentioned. I haven't done steak an awful lot, but I was pretty happy with how that turned out. It was a nice rare, just as I wanted it. Um, the flavor was awesome. It was very juicy, tender, etc. I was very, very happy with how that turned out. But anyway, onto the skillet, because that's kind of the whole point. The skillet, when I took it off of the stove, after I was done eating, the skillet was you know room temperature, cool to the touch. The seasoning looked absolutely flawless on it. The only area where I saw stuff sticking was... Um, if you go back to when I was actually cooking, I took a, a spoonful of garlic that minced garlic and olive oil bit and I dabbed it down right about here on the skillet and ultimately I left it there too long I baked it on there and that skillet was hot undeniably and that stuff burned to essentially charcoal in place and so I ran the skillet under hot tap water and pretty much everything came off except that <clears throat> and the seasoning looked perfect everywhere and so I decided to well I'm gonna have to get that baked on garlic off of there right so I started going at it with my fingernail and it was doing the job somewhat um, then I resorted to just uh, turning this into an experiment and seeing how the seasoning stands up to my normal uh, dish cleaning methods so my normal dish cleaning methods involve this guy which uh, you know, I bought at the hardware store. Uh, I bought it with the initial intention of uh, you know using it to scrub like potatoes and carrots, etc., to get some of the dirt off of them under running water before I cook them. Um, and I've gone on to use it for cleaning dishes, some hard, uh, hard baked on stuff. But ultimately, this is marketed as looking at the label a hand and a nail brush. Um, yeah, so I guess it's for cleaning dirt off from under your nails, which I always have a major problem with, but I generally just dig it out with a pocket knife for my other fingernails. Anyhow, I went ahead and used this to see how this would take care of the baked on garlic, and it worked, but it was also taking off the seasoning. And so at that point, I figured, you know what, heck with it, i got to re-season this thing. Anyhow, I'm just going to go for broke, and see what the other implements I've got do to the seasoning. Now there's the old um, the old standing golden rule of cast iron skillets don't ever use soap on them because it'll tear away the seasoning. I went ahead and experimented with that. I took everyday dish soap, the blue dawn stuff. Uh, I work in a grease manufacturing um, factory as a quality control chemist and we use this stuff for cleaning up our, our dishes, essentially our, our glassware, beakers and flasks, etc. that we use for our day-to-day -day work. And this stuff works excellently for cutting the grease. Um, well, I figured let's go for broke and try it on there. And I put a, a large dab of it on the edge where the seasoning is unaffected. Rubbed it around with my fingers initially in a concentrated state. I didn't dilute it with water. And it didn't seem to be doing anything at all to the seasoning. And then I ran it under water and tried to get a little bit of suds action and again it really didn't seem to be doing anything. Um, then I grabbed a dish rag and lathered around the entire skillet, the walls, the bottom, etc. Pretty much like I would do on any plate, what have you. And uh, for the most part the seasoning was standing up just fine to it. Um, Again, going back to the hand and nail brush here, yeah, that was taking the seasoning off because you know you're using the edges of those bristles, and it's there. It's a fairly stiff bristle on here, and that was aggressively taking the seasoning off. So I figured, you know, let's try my other brush. I've got a bottle brush here that I really like using for cleaning skillets. I put soap on it, water in the skillet, and I swirl it around really fast and get a really nice lather of soap, and that that's great for breaking up grease. Um, but that really didn't seem to take the seasoning off. This is a much, much softer bristle, way, 
way softer night and day um, but you're essentially using the the suds action that, that surface action for getting uh, the grease off so I don't know that that brush would be very effective in fixing my mistake of baking that um, that garlic on I don't know how how effective it would be in that um, going forward I'll have to try doing that again baking on garlic uh, baking it onto the skillet again and then perhaps trying to heat the skillet up on the stove top and then running tap water on there to kind of use the boiling action of the water and the oil and the garlic etc to to break it up and see how that goes um, but anyway yeah I I trashed the seasoning on this thing it was kind of in the name of science in a sense yeah, I'm kind of zooming in here for you guys you can see it's I mean it's essentially bare iron I'm not entirely sure how accurate that is because if it was entirely 100% bare iron it would be rusting um, and I experienced this when I um, when I went to wash this thing to prepare it for applying the seasoning before I got this thing to the burner on the stove top it was already turning that rust color um, and so it was rusting right before my very eyes and looking at this um, I've had it on here for well at least as long as I've been jabbering to you guys and a little bit longer than that setting up the camera etc and I'm really not seeing any visible change in it so maybe there is an infinitesimally thin layer of oil residue what have you that's still baked in place seasoning baked in place because there's I'm abundantly confident there's no oil left on the skillet because I cleaned the heck out of it with soap and suds etc uh, so no oil should be left on here um, looking at other parts of the skillet like the walls the walls seem to be untouched they look absolutely perfect um, and I was again using the the bottle brush on the walls as well as the dish rag I used a dish rag and soap I didn't use this nylon bristle brush the hand and nail brush because that seems to be a proven seasoning killer because it's too aggressive um, but there you have it it's a fair and honest review of um, of the seasoning job that I did on here and this was sanded with 80 grit sandpaper as I mentioned before um, so what am I going to do am I going to go to a coarser grit of sandpaper because I've seen uh, you know abrasive papers all the way down to the geez like the 36 I think was maybe one of the coarsest I've seen um, that's that's pretty nasty uh, excuse me pretty nasty I'm not, I'm not gonna go there um, I think I'm just gonna reseason it and leave it and trust that over time it's gonna be fine I still love the aesthetics of a smooth naturally seasoned pan over the alternative and I'm going to zoom out and show you the alternative here this is the alternative this is a, an as you find it off the shelf lodge cast iron skillet zoom in on it here the you know the surface is really rough uh, kind of like truck bed liner and you know it's interesting when I look closely at the high spots of that rough texture it is bare metal or you know seemingly so if there's any seasoning on there it's just as thin as the perceivably bare metal areas on my hand sanded skillet So yeah, I don't know. And there's stuff on here. I've cleaned the heck out of the skillet, but there's stuff on here that's still baked on. It just doesn't come off like it does on a smooth skillet. And that's why I like smoothing them out, because I get a nice clean skillet at the end of the day. But ultimately it's up to you guys as to whether or not you you know you prepare your skillets in this way. I personally like it better. Um, you know, not only because I put all the work into it, but I think it looks much more beautiful, and I think it's 
more the, the natural way to do things. There's another thought that I've had on preparing skills, and I've got uh, I've got a, a, a griddle iron here. This is also a lodge. Um, this is untouched, effectively. This sucker is really rough. It's way, way coarser than the, the 12 inch skillet that I just showed you. And I bought this mainly for pancakes, you know, because it's a much lower rise, so I can get a spatula under the pancakes to flip them. Um, this guy, I'm definitely going to re-season it, or, uh, you know, sand it down, smooth it, and re-season it. It'll be very, very easy because it's a very large, flat area. There's very little in terms of walls to, uh, to take care of. But I think I'm going to, I'll probably do a video on that. I'll sand it down, wire wheel, etc., prepare the surface, and hand sand it to an 80 grit finish like I did with, with the number 7 antique skillet there. But then I'll do an additional step, and that is uh, sandblasting it. So I've got a sandblaster at my parents' house in Chicagoland, and uh, I'll take it down there and blast it with media and see what kind of a difference that makes in terms of not only non-stick effectiveness, but also uh, durability of seasoning. Uh, these skillet manufacturers like Smithy, which is kind of my gold standard, that's what I'm going after, is to have a product that, or a final product that looks like theirs. Um, they, as well as Lodge, sell chainmail scrubbing pads. Um, maybe that's a maybe that's a more seasoning friendly approach. Maybe that doesn't trash the seasoning, but it gets baked on crud off of there. So I think I'm going to look into getting one of those. Um, you know, I when I was cooking the steaks, you saw me using a spoon. I was I was stirring the, the the garlic around and the butter, etc., with a spoon that was metal on metal contact or metal on seasoning contact. And like I said, when I was done using the skillet, it didn't look any worse for the wear. It looked perfectly fine, like the spoon didn't do anything to it. So maybe that chainmail is a good approach. Um, I don't know. I got experimenting to do here, but uh, I think for now I'm going to reseason that skillet. I'm not going to. I'm not going to further abrade it. I'm just going to leave it as is, heat it up, and uh, get some more coats of oil on there. It's not going to take long, and you know, continue to use it, and we'll see how it goes from there. So thank you very much for watching. Um, stay tuned, and we'll get uh, going on some some further projects here. I got some cabinets to build down in the basement, so I'll bring you guys along for that. So thanks again for watching. Please like and subscribe. And uh, have a great day.